Hello world, I'm LJ and this is LJ Goes Sweden. Today is the 205th day for me in this country and as I already promised you a few days ago I wanted to give another recap 100 days later than the first 100 days in Sweden just to compare how much I achieved, what happened in those other 100 days and to give a yeah overview about the next 100 days or also maybe the next months until I have reached one full year. Okay, so how could I describe these days from 100 to 200? I would say the best way to say it is these were the days of stabilization, relieving and focusing on the important parts of being in a different country. As you have seen in the first 100 days, I was very unsure how long I will be able to manage living in Sweden because I had no job, I had no apartment, nothing. And after I have managed all of these close to the 105th day, it was now time to figure out how do I get my money? How do I insure myself and especially like what do I need? What can I do in this town? Do I have any opportunities to meet people? And all these things. I basically have realized a lot of things living in this area, in this town. And that is that working here in Sweden at this company at Sanmina is pretty nice. It is really, really a great thing going there every day at work. Yes, there are of course negatives at work or like not negatives, but boring things or maybe annoying things, but it could be way, way worse. And I am very happy about this situation. However, I have realized that living here without any car, I basically feel very prisoned because I'm not able to move Around. Yes, I can walk around in the area, try to see things, but if I want to get to the train station, I need to catch a bus somehow, which I still have not tried, or I need to catch a ride with my landlord. Other things, well, social connections is kind of dependent on the same thing, because you can only meet other people when you do something outside, and because I cannot really go freely around, yeah, you know it. The first day is of this chapter basically were the big struggle with bank ID, with my online identification, with my banking account in general, the struggle about calling many banks, trying to figure out why they don't make me a bank account. I have a person number, but no, they want me to have an ID. Then thinking about maybe switching my driver's license to a Swedish one. And in the end, well, I took a short trip to Umeå I did it there and yeah, even though I kind of lost 1000 euros, which I hope, I really hope I get them back next year when they do the tax declaration, I just don't have the money now and that is still kind of annoying. Then another big factor that really played a huge role in these 100 days was my health situation. It got worse. It... It's definitely nowadays a struggle for me to get up fully energetic and able to move. Um, sometimes it really, really takes a long time, not only here at home, but also at work to get going after sitting a longer time. But I can say for now that I have this health appointment coming up this week and I just hope that it's going to work out and that I get all the medication that I want and that I don't have to worry about things that I'm going through right now. Sometimes worse and sometimes not as bad. Okay, well, but let's talk about some good things that happened in these last 100 days. And that was, first of all, the whole Eurovision journey. Yes, maybe some of you watched the whole grand final and it was such a shit show. So much chaos with the EBU, with Israel, with the Netherlands, but still... It was a great time for me getting the excitement, watching each song, starting to do reactions because not only have I gained a lot of viewers from that, but also I 
myself started to put more effort into the Eurovision Song Contest, which is really interesting because besides last year, I have never really looked into the Eurovision Song Contest before and I love music, but now I know it and I'm looking forward to next year, even though I'm really a bit scared and worried what is about to happen regarding all the aftermaths of this year's Eurovision Song Contest. But still, I have watched the Melody Festival and I'm looking forward for next year there. I have watched the Melody Grand Prix and it's going to be a great, great time. Yes, this is not going to happen in the next 100 days, but it will happen next year, hopefully. And the other big thing that happened these last 100 days were I had the chance to test drive a Tesla twice in these 100 days. First, it was a 30 minute drive with a work colleague of mine driving the Tesla Model 3 rear wheel drive or standard range and then having the chance to take a car here in front of my apartment, sleep in it overnight, try out every single feature and just see and understand why I need such a car for my daily drive and also for camping. Okay, but what is coming up now if we talk about pros and cons and neutral things in Sweden? I have the Excel sheet open from last time and I want to see if my opinion has changed on things or if I can add things that I have not talked about so far. Well, the cons. Okay, so I've written down the social system is worse than in Germany higher taxes, unemployment insurance. I think it is still a con, but I, I got used to it. I would not really complain about this because you're living in this system and you just kind of accept it. Maybe it will change in the future when I have to pay for all my medications and also for each doctor visit, but I can definitely put on the pro side the level of digitalization in Sweden thanks to the bank ID everything being fully connected between all the companies. If you are like scanning in your bank ID, you share the data and it is amazing. I definitely know that there will also be negatives about this, but as of right now, the digitality in Sweden is definitely still a huge pro, which was also a pro already in the last 100 days. Then higher living costs was another argument for me, a negative one compared to living in Germany. I really cannot really tell you too much negative about this. Like, yes, maybe it is more expensive, but everyone in Sweden goes through that. So there is no complaining if you compare it to other Swedes. For me speaking, even though my Swedish language has still not really improved, I would say that I feel myself already more living in this country than living in Germany all those years before. And this is why I can accept those things really easily, as of right now, at least. Then we have the argument of isolation, which is definitely the biggest con that I have still to this day. I have no friends here, which is actually not that annoying because I work five out of seven days a week. So there is not really a chance to hang out with people after that. But like on those two, three days, Maybe it would be nice to at least do like once a month something with someone and then if I can do my camping thing, if I have the Tesla, that would be already a good thing. But also without a car, you are screwed. I wrote that. Definitely, 100%, I will give my, my money on that con here in Earnshots Week where I live right now. Last thing I wrote is the currency argument and yes, definitely, the euro is so much better than the Swedish crown based on the like um, comparison and because if you're traveling into a different European country that has the euro it is just way way more expensive everywhere than being in Sweden. I don't really know how much more expensive it is going to be when I would travel to Norway. We will see how that goes when I plan on travel through Europe in the future. So now let's check the pros that I have written down. And if I already see like the digitality thing, I already said it, everything connected through bank ID, the Swish thing, so basically like the Swedish PayPal where you can just use your phone number to transfer money. It is amazing. Actually, today I was grocery shopping with my phone 
And if you have the, the app of the grocery store, you can basically use your phone to scan in all the articles that you buy. And in the end, you scan a QR code in the store and then you can say pay with Swish. You click on it, you scan your face or you sign with a, I don't know, a pin code and then you paid it without going to like a credit card or talking to anyone. Okay, and then we have the other parts. Nature, where I cannot really tell you anything crazy again, as I said, because I don't have a car. I have no chance to explore the life here so far. And then we have temperature. And that was definitely one of the most impressive things that the snow here in my area really stayed up till the beginning of May. And then it started to be really hot without even giving us a few days of in between like plus 10, 15. No, it went up to 20, 25 instantly. And now we are between 15 and 20 most of the time. I really think this is still not full summer. I think there is going to be a way warmer summer coming up in June, I guess. But already saying that it is cooler most of the time compared to the, the temperatures that I hear from friends and family in Germany is such a relief for me. I just don't like hot temperatures. I walk to work every day and I walk back from work every day. And thinking about this, doing that in 30 plus degrees every day, coming sweaty to work, nah, that's not what I want. I want to go to work, basically get warm by moving. And if you are standing and you're getting kind of chill, that's the perfect temperature. But something else that I actually can include here that I have not written down in the last 100 days is the daylight situation now in summertime. The sun sets at, I think, like quarter past 10 and it rises again at maybe 3 o'clock in the morning. So we really have already a full daylight. And that is just crazy because it really doesn't feel unnatural in a certain way because... Yes, of course, I have not seen darkness in a very long time already. Still, it just feels for me very normal to not wonder too much about seeing stars. I think this time of the year where it is mostly bright is definitely the one that is more enjoyable. Whereas the winter time, especially now when I'm working, is going to be really, really yeah, sad, depressive maybe. Because you go to work at 7 dog you leave work at three four pitch black and that's going to be really really interesting to see that now this year when i have a normal work cycle well what else have i written down yeah i have written down like a lot of freedom activities and things there was one crazy thing if you can remember maybe i was taken by a neighbor here to the closest lake on his snowmobile and that was really, really cool. So we went on the lake and he showed me around and showed me his yeah, small little summer house. Even though I was not in there, but he has invited me basically to just take a visit when it's summertime. So maybe I will do that in the next month. Will be interesting for sure. But also most of them, I have not really too much input on these yet. And last thing I wanted to talk about is the situation with Northern Lights. I am actually very surprised how rare northern lights are even up here. Yes, I have spotted them in the last 100 days, but these 100 days, there was nothing. And then you have like two weeks ago, those huge, strong northern lights in Germany, America, basically everywhere where it's dark. And here, because it's bright, you have no chance of seeing them, which is kind of crazy. But I'm not sad that I have not seen them because I definitely have higher chances of seeing them more often in the winter time but it's still surprising for me that it's not that often as i would have expected okay and then i have some neutral facts regarding politics immigration work data privacy i don't really want to yeah give too much input on these because i don't have any changed opinions so those were the last 100 days now from the 100th to the 200th day for lj goes sweden now the question remains of course what is next in these 100 days if i if i'm not calculating it wrong i will have my vacation in these next 100 days 
And as of right now, if everything goes smooth, which I unfortunately still don't know, my plan is to be like um, one week in Germany at my family's place, at my friend's place. And the other two weeks, I would hope to be somewhere in Norway, check out the ocean areas of Norway. And that would be really a dream for me. Take you guys, of course, along with it, with my drone and make some cool footage. And besides that, well, work is definitely going to continue. But the biggest goal for me in those next 100 days is actually to get this Tesla. Right now I'm planning to do like this monthly payment. Um, in Sweden it's called Privat Afbetalning. So like a, a car loan thing where you pay over a certain time, a certain amount per month. And then you have like a certain um, residual value, I would say that you can pay to get the whole car but it is still kind of in the making because I really have to be sure that if I do that monthly payment and include like insurance and electricity costs and tax and whatsoever that I don't run into problems that I still have enough money to go on vacation remember I will be going to Iceland at the end of this year and of course also like driving through Norway still costs a lot of money, electricity and then maybe also like buying food and what whatsoever. It is really important for me to calculate everything through in full detail before I make moves that I might reconsider in the future. I don't want to get in trouble with banks, let's just say it like that. And besides all these travel things, that I will be doing when I have the car. Of course, I plan on like doing a lot of camping things in Sweden. In winter time, I definitely want to make some content about the Tesla batteries, the charging times and real winter conditions because I have seen so much videos talking about winter conditions and then they have like minus two degrees and I'm like, I have minus 25. That is winter condition. 20 centimeters of new snow. That is winter condition and not having like small snowflakes, like not even a layer on the street. So I really want to test this out, not only to see it for myself, but also to give other people that might plan of buying an electric vehicle in general in real winter life conditions. But besides this, well, I will be continuing doing reactions. It all, of course, depends on if I have some ideas that I feel like, hey, I want to do those things. But that is my life. And that is LJ Goes Sweden. So I hope you had a wonderful weekend. Have a good start to your next week. And we are about to see each other now on this upcoming week with Alessandra Mele and her songs, Queen of Kings, Pretty Devil, Bad Bitch, um, heavy, narcissist and other songs that I just cannot think of right now. There are always small parts in each video that are regarding my daily life and even if you're not interested in the rest, that is exactly the reason why I want to keep it like that. You have the option. Okay, but now I really talked way too long so I hope you had a wonderful day. Bye bye.